Hello, 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 and welcome to Aina Rangru Cast. With me, Rangru. And today, we bring Hunter in A2v2 on Punjing Valley. So, on the left hand side, in blue, playing as blue four, we got zero CGC and the Dodo 1001. And on the right hand side, in red, we got Yoda. <laughs> and. If I lose, please tell me why I lose. Which is actually a pretty good username, especially if you're a new player, because if you do lose a match, you're like, what the hell is this BS? How could they do this and that? Sometimes it's good to ask what your opponent did, or even better, re watch the replay. Because if you are new to the game, watch your replays. See where the enemy really were. See what, you know, you could have brought up to counter. Or just, you know, watch my videos. That's always a good idea, please. Please watch these. No, you're watching them right now, so thank you very much. But anyway, we got some thing being put down here. And away we go. Seems like on red we got uh, an eastern block for lose. And a standard USSR for Yoda. While the Dodo is playing a Commonwealth deck. And Zero CGC seems to be playing a Eurocorp tank, so rather standard stuff all around. Pretty meta stuff being played. And this is a map that definitely promotes aggressive play. Because there's not many points to capture, and if you can capture, you know, either Delta or Fo or Alpha from, you know, your opponent's side, that's a very big boon. But apart from that, it really just comes down to heavy flanking play on Bravo and Foxtrot. And lose getting into Bravo, removing the infantry, taking a bit of damage there. But that's not the thing he has to worry about. The Dodo is flanking around through his forest. And from his forest, he can get into here and cut off reinforcements. So this is a great point to rush to. Because it allows you to hold quite a lot of grounding. Soat from Zero CGC, not going all that route. The Buratino bringing on the fire, actually 24 m dropping in bombs. As the Dodo tries to rush into Bravo, it seems to get in there ASAP for the infantry. And we did unload him first. So it's not taking a little bit longer, and they are going to be exposed. He has last and they could fly the particle. Oh, he's two C72 Rilks aren't going to get into the forest. A little bit too close to the Vickers and the challenge of Ronmark 3 are really to focus fire on those rilks. And that Charlie, oh, it's just outgunned. Even if it does kill the one on low HP, the other one's still going to be able to shoot and probably reload first. I mean, Charlie has 8 and then the rilk has 9. Yeah. I mean, in a CQC scenario, AP doesn't really matter if you're you know, roughly the same. It really just comes down to fire rate. Which is why I love using Yontos. There's nothing says fast fire rate like six or toilet rifles. But anyway, Yoda. Trying to get into Foxtrot. But do it, he shan't. As the infantry do get killed, forcing his vehicles to fall back. And if they lose, he's getting surrounded a bit. I mean, the infantry going to be killing the ropes here. The Charlie one Mark 3 does manage to survive. Very smart decision not trying to engage. And that rope's gun is jammed, which is probably the worst place for the gun to get jammed. But anyway, Blueform managing to capture on the Bravo. Completely holding the point. And it's going to be a rather easy point to hold to get some infantry in a town, you know, a bit of ATGM guys. And then hold this forest, and from here they can attack into Delta. It's a very good array to attack into it. You've got the forest cover here. And heck, you can move along your top hand side and really flank around if you're feeling ballsy. More Red Fort does manage to hold on to Foxtrot, but they don't have the entire point captured. Blue Force still holds on to the factory on the left hand side. Giving him just enough room to put a CV to 
neutralize the point. And I'm quite surprised that neither side tried to do a rush through middle, because honestly, a rush through middle is usually the best strategy. It's very risky if it doesn't work, but if it does work, you can capture a lot of ground and get a lot of points. Zero CTC bring up a lot of reinforcements, a lot of tanks, which is definitely a common staple of the Eurocorp deck. Definitely going to be useful because if you have a BU here, and that Lapid 2A5 will definitely be the best counter to it. Fortunately, dodging those ATGMs from the BU, Proton, Cat, and the Snipe. And the Burrettino shooting onto the factory, trying to get those commando powers. Which aren't taking fire, quite literally. And the second shot. For the Kalinian Commandos. And the monster actually being brought up to try and capture the town. Now the U is going to expose itself to the Milan F3. Oh, taking a shot here. It's going to be taking another hit. Forcing to fall back and taking a lot of damage. And with that now in the back line, this is pretty much useless. It'd be really all, you know, if the Black Patrick 5 moves up, it's definitely going to kill it and roll the shot. And that's a very good crash in Dodo. Very good teamwork here. Considering that he doesn't really need anything down bottom, he has it under control. And Zero CGC replying, Roof, he needs anti aircraft infantry. Marcus from Red 4 down here, Daya Rin, Daya and Wu. Whatever that means. Yoda speaking gibberish as always. Yeah, it's a little bit of a grass on Fox Rock, nothing, nothing crazy. This match has been rather. Rather passive. Zero CGC going to be clearing out his moves to strength, or at least falling, causing them to fall back as the Jaegers move up and fall along the course. And the C 72 BU moving up once again, but now it is healed thanks to the Ural. Ain't gonna be getting shot after shot. Yeah, the Milan F3 just gonna do ex the exact same thing as before and snipe it. Already taking it down to four hit points. Down the East Gas is an Avatar. It's not in the best position. Gets an overrun by the tanks. You would have quite a, quite a heavy force down it in ADAT and a Charlie 2 top tier common round unit here. With some Canadians inside, yeah, this will make shift APCs. Yeah, Bradley Ronnabies. And the important thing is that Blue Fall manages to get a bit of a foothold with the Fox Tron. They're going to be able to sneak a CV in there. And from they're going to increase their plus one capacity. Because they are going to lead by quite a bit 168 points to three. But three points is better than zero, I guess. Boratino gonna be firing once again and that yeah, might kill the CV. Boratinos usually do that against infantry. There we go. I mean, it's probably the best idea if they do get another infantry CV is to put it in this town or just get a tank run and not care. So when you do have a tank CV, you don't you have to worry about the Bertie Nilk too much, at least you know it will survive on some sort of HP. The Canadian rifles are going to be moving up into the forest. As we pretty much have a little bit of a proxy war 
in the bottom of Bravo. And the Deccan's grouper fights in the T 72 f but not exactly right now. Well, if I would say you've got a very nice sniper on the T 72 a lap of Trey Five. Trying to fly a passport, yo, yeah, in the open to Funkers Empire. Gonna be pulling back. And a Dodo did actually bring out some sort of AA infantry SAS. So he is helping. Well, the Odia, yeah, they go, if I lose this round, helping on top too. So it does seem like both sides are pretty much focused, at least somewhat, on the top hand side. Now Charlie 2 moving into the forest stretch is a little bit risky, yeah. especially at close against ropes, because even at close range, armor will take damage. And you can see just ripping through the armor, Charlie 2 falling back, you know, he needs to fall back a little bit more I'd say. Now, oh he's moving back up with only 2 HP. Oh, he's just popping in and out, only exposing himself for a short period of time. Canadian rifles, five fire support. But it does seem like his entire battle down there is really for naught. It's not really going to make much progress camp in this area. And Dodo can really just hold down this forest with my TGM recon. Trying to attack through the open field. As you see, it was MI 17s. Getting some good kills here. And we got smoke firing on the Milan M3s. Making sure he doesn't shoot on the BU again. But I think he's pretty sick and tired of that by now. Not strictly holding on to the factory. Speed us up a little bit more. And you would have taken some airplane damage, yeah? Or attacks from the airplanes, I should really say. And we've got a counter push here from zero for 2A5 and 2 2A runs and a run 1A5. I think for it really helps Zero if he just tries and get into his forest, trying to get over the BU and the other tanks in the And then pull the monitor. But from here, if he manages to hold and at least put a defensive line in his bottom part, cut off reinforcements and support on top as well. Really, this little forest area allows you to easily hold Foxtrot and the surrounding location. But he's being very skittish with his lap, but he's not wanting to move it up. But he, if they're all just to move up in that BB, they'd easily kill him. As well as only the T32 paint in there. But when you do have a super heavy tank like that, you do tend to be a little bit reluctant to fully utilize it. Because it's very expensive. It doesn't seem like Dodo is actually making a play for Delta, and Delta it's always a good idea to attack, because even if you don't fully capture it, as long as you can put a CB in, if the is really possible for it, even for a minute, that's plus two. An easy plus two. The blue people don't exactly need, you know, the extra points in order to find that. You know, story points not more points. Actually, to just take a missile after missile, rocket after rocket, only in round 17. Even though it's very deadly, 122mm rocket. And this is so, ain't exactly going too well, the rope's being brought up. And the Leopard 2 is just moving back and forth. This is not 
I'm managing to commit them to this fight. That lap would get a little bit too close to the VDVs, it's going to be pulling it back. Those VDVs can hit you from quite a far distance. Tutorial API already just blowing up our full motor. Very scary unit to fight in a CQC scenario, even if infantry. Because it does have enough armor to tank an RPG or two if it's you know a lower grade RPG we're using. We have to fight the full motor to open their ground. And he did manage to sneak out the beans out of like I said, bring them up to a very nice plus two. And it is a tank CP, even though it is only a level 1, it is going to be a bit more survivable and bring up the UAT or infantry. So it's going to allow them to hold on to it for a lot bit extra longer at least. And they are mainly focused on dealing with the infantry force up here, not actually sending something around to kill that tank. There we go, Veratino doing its thing. Good thing that was a tank CP, because it's fine to only two damage to its name. Super Rat now flying over and getting the shot down. And we got artillery. Drop it out in Delta. And a bird, you know, firing once again. Yeah, pretty much Yoda has Foxtrot he has completely under his control. So really Blue Ford is doing our best to take into Delta right now. And honestly that is a better flight to fight over. Much more rapid. Anyway. Red Ford is just it's just not all good for him at all. They got to catch up to 250 points in you know seven minutes so on this map it's kind of hard to catch up the outpass because there isn't many places you can really see these snipe or rush into they're up to you again it's out of the ground force at any time too now barely no one down and just blue for just has a humongous force in the middle just, just in terms of numbers alone, AA, Leopard 2, Zolto, 3, Supply, and Recon. Just layers of layers of forces. Keeping response to which is always a good idea, as he does bring up the Kahu, Kahu. Something else has to be just slipped back into the forest. And we got Rooks and T64s being brought up to try and deal with his tank infantry push. They are red they just don't have. They don't have enough to hold on. Exactly, have I'm quite surprised he's using more to run because they are this the base person is pretty good awful, only 15% accuracy. Yes, it's 15 points, but it's much more rare for to get the run A3 or one A2 if you want the auto cannon, run A3 if you want the ATGM. But the one A2 has 25% accuracy, I believe, with the auto cannon, which 
is definitely more usable to say. Also setting the LSTR. And uh, his experience is gonna be a good game for Luthor. As you see the final few or so chair. And yeah, this will be a good game to blue. A very close skill advantage, yeah, literally only <laughs> a, trove point, a trove point difference. Which is quite crazy, because that means there must have been at least three one point trucks. I can't go kill all. Yeah, I would say three one point trucks. But yeah, a rather good match. Uh, blue for what really allowed him to win that match was rushing into Bravo first off. Fantastic, because once he got Bravo. They held on to it. Redfall didn't even bother a counter attacking because it's a pain in the ass to counter attack. And from there, they harassed into Foxtrot and even just having the Foxtrot CV neutralized, allowed them to slowly gain a little bit of plus run. And then, once that didn't go two rounds, they attacked into Delta. They didn't completely capture both of those areas, but just keeping it neutralized, getting that point, which was the all important thing in walking, allowing them to win. And on this map, you have to be aggressive, you have to rush into the enemy point, like in Bravo, and just take the initiative, because there's not many command areas where you can, you know, regain lost ground, regain lost points rather quickly, and Red Bull are a little bit defensive. And Ro, I'm going to leave it off the app, this has been another Rangaroo card, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as usual, please just take it easy.